What's up guys and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into relationships in Laval Nova. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. When it comes to relationships in Nova, you have the ability to define any relationship you've got within Laravel itself. You first got to make sure that you create a new Laravel resource where you can add a relationship to. So let's start off by doing that. Since we got our product, we should link it to a specific brand. So let's start off by defining our model from the command line interface. We will be starting off by defining our brand. So let's say PHP artisan make me a new model named brand and let's add a dash M flag to it for the migration. Now keep in mind that Laravel has tons of relationships so I can't cover them all, but most of them work in the same exact way. So let's navigate back to PHP Storm and let's search for our new migration which is create brands table. Now right under our ID we're going to define a new column named name. Then we have a table string which will be the website URL. Then we have the table string as well, which will be the industry. And finally, we have a table, which is a Boolean, where the name of the column is is underscore published. Now let's also make sure that we enable mass assignment on our brand model. So let's open our brand's model and right under our has factory trait, let's define our protected fillable property, which is equal to an array. And in there, we're going to say that our name, website URL, our industry, and our is published are enabled for mass assignment. We're almost ready to migrate our brand migration, but we do need to make a change to our product's migration first, since one product is related to one brand, and it needs to be required as well. So whenever we create a new product, the brand needs to be added to it as well. And we can't just add a foreign key constraint to our product's migration, because our brand's migration has been created after. So let's navigate back to the CLI. Now let's define a new migration. Let's say PHP artisan make me a migration named add underscore brand underscore ID to my products table. And let's also add the table to it by saying dash dash table is equal to products. So let's navigate back to PHP storm and let's open our add brand ID to products table, where we're simply going to add one column, which will be the table unsigned big integer, since it's a foreign key constraint of brand underscore ID. Now let's make sure that we add the foreign key constraint by saying table foreign. The foreign key will be the brand underscore ID. It will reference the column ID on the table brands. And once a brand gets deleted, delete all related products as well. All right, we got to make sure that we reset our migrations first. So let's navigate back to iTerm and let's run PHP artisan migrate fresh to drop all migrations and rerun them again. This does mean that we lost all of our data. So let's define a new user through the CLI as well by saying PHP artisan Nova user. We're going to add the same credentials. So my name is code with Dari. I've got my email address right here and my password. We've been prompted with a message saying that our user has been created successfully. And before we define our product and brand relationship, we should make sure that we define our resource first. So we could add brands into our application. So let's say PHP artisan Nova, make me a resource named brand. Let's hit enter. All right, let's navigate back to PHP Storm. And let's open our brand resource. And let's start at the top. Our model is correct. Our title property needs to be changed to the name of the brand. Then we have our search bar above the table, which has ID and name. Then we need to define our fields. We won't be using the ID right here, so let's remove it. And we're going to define four new fields right here, which will represent the brand. The first one has a fuels type of text. We're going to change the make method to it. The name of our fuel type is name. We're going to change the sortable method to it. We're going to change the required method to it. 
and we're going to change the show on preview method to it. Now, let me actually align it on the line below. All right. Now, the second field type will be a URL. So let's pull it in. Make. We're going to make a website URL with the attribute name of website underscore URL. We have a show on preview. It's required. And it will be text align to the left. Now, let me align this on the line below as well. All right. The third field type will be text as well. It has a name of industry. It is sortable. It is required. And it is shown on preview. And finally, the text align will be left as well. So let me align this again. And the last field type will be our Boolean. Name will be status, while the attribute will be is underscore published. It is sortable, and it is shown on preview. Finally, it's going to be text aligned to the left. Now let me align this on the line below. All right. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, you'll see that we have a new option right below our resources named Brands. So let's click on it. Let's create a new brand. Let's add a name and let me actually make it capital right here. That's on me right here. All right. Refresh it. Those are just small things that are bothering me when making a tutorial. The name will be Apple. The website URL will be HTTPS. Apple.com. The industry is electronics and the status is checked. Let's click on create and add another because the second one will be Microsoft. The website URL will be HTTPS www.microsoft.com. The industry will be electronics as well and the status Oops, I pressed enter right here. So let's edit it. All right, update it. And right here, you'll see that we have two new brands. Now it's time to add our product resource. If we click on our products right now and create a new one, you don't really see an option right here where we could choose a brand. When you want to work with relationships in Nova, you got to define them inside the models before you could use them inside your resource. So let's navigate back to our product model. And then right below our protected fillable property, we're gonna define a new public function. One product can only have one brand. So we're gonna define a singular brand right here. Then we're gonna return this belongs to, and what it belongs to is the brand class. We also need to make sure that we define a relationship the other way around as well, where Nova will create an overview of all products from a specific brand. So let's open our brand model. And once again, let's say it out loud, one brand has many products. So we need to define a plural method right here named products, which will return this has many products. Now, if we navigate to our product resource and scroll to the bottom right below our Boolean field type right here and add another one, and the field type will not be a type text or whatever, but it will be a belongs to Nova field, which is basically representing the relationships between our products and our brands. Now this will not look inside a table and look for a brand ID column, but it will look inside our product model and it will search for our relationship that we have defined at the bottom. So let's navigate back and let's define the method name that we just defined named brand. Now let's change the sortable method to it and also the show on preview method. Let me align it on the line below. All right. If we navigate to the browser, refresh our create products overview, and right at the bottom, you'll see that we added brands right here. And if we click on the select, you'll see that we have two options. The first one is Apple, and the second one is Microsoft. Now let's add a new product with the name of iPhone 14. The name is test. The price is 1019. The SKU is just a random number. The quantity is 25. The status is checked and the brand is Apple. 
Keep in mind that this does not change the data that will be entered into the database. Behind the scenes, it will make sure that the brand ID will be added and not the brand name. If we click on create product, you'll see our product details overview of iPhone 14. If we click on products in the sidebar, you'll see that the brand of Apple has been added right here into a product overview. And we could even click on it to open information about a brand. A pretty cool feature that Nova offers is that you could also show products from a specific brand. Right now, you're only seeing basic information about their brand, which is alright, but wouldn't it be cool if you could see all products of a specific brand? Well, it has a feature for that. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm and let's open our brand resource. And right at the bottom, below our Boolean field type, we're going to define a has many Nova field right here, which will look inside a brand model and it needs to search for a method called products. If we navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see a new table right below our brand's details of Apple, where you pretty much see the same table as a product resource, but only products that have a brand of Apple. Now we can check this by going back to the brand's overview, click on Microsoft, and right here, you'll see that Microsoft has no products inside our database. Another thing you need to be aware of is that it doesn't add a new input field when you want to define a new brand. Right here, you'll see that only the name, website URL, industry, and status are visible. Even though we basically added a new field type right here of has many. Now this was it for this episode where I showed you how you could add relationships in Laravel. In the next video, we're going to have a look at validation in Laravel Nova. If you do like my content and you want to see more, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.